the peasants, the fishermen, the crafts, and all of whom were, all of them were victims of neoliberal capitalism. The idea should be to unite them around this alternative agenda. This alternative agenda cannot be immediately a socialist agenda, because if so, then of course many people would get rid of it. On the contrary, this alternative agenda must promise to defend and protect petty production. Okay. The protection of petty production is not a socialist agenda. You move from there towards the socialist agenda. Okay. Now, therefore, in that, in that, the idea, therefore, is to have an alternative state, not a one-party dictatorship, not at all, in, in my view, that would actually completely uh, ruin the prospects of progress, but it would have to be an alternative state based on the support of workers and peasants and so on, with several parties functioning, but the role of the Communist Party, so the role of what is so special about the Communist Party? Okay, I mean, why, 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 why do we say that there's something special about the Communist Party? Because the Communist Party is armed with the theory of Marxism. Okay. Now, therefore, a Communist Party does not establish its hegemony over a revolution simply by getting rid of the other parties, but because of the fact that in every critical point, it has an answer to the problem which the others lack. Okay. It is the most consistent force for carrying the revolution forward and therefore it finds an echo as far as the people are concerned. All right. So I would say at the present moment, the idea in India or in other countries too, would be for the left to come with an agenda around which you can mobilize large segments of the people against neoliberal capitalism. It would be a neoliberal agenda, and you would mobilize other political forces, elements, and so on, and move slowly from there towards the establishment of a state of workers and peasants. And a state of workers and peasants is not a one-party dictatorship, and that proceeds in stages towards socialism. The, the, the marshal, you know, I think the old notion that one day barricades will be set up and we'll have socialism or we'll have a dictator to the proletariat, that is not what I visualize because that was a situation of war, a situation in which, you know, kind of, you know, say in Russia and elsewhere, uh, that was a very, very, very specific conjuncture in which that had happened. That's not our conjuncture. There is no war. There are no kind of soldiers who are unhappy with the war and therefore kind of you know roaming around and, and can be mobilized into Soviet. So so it's a very different situation. Okay. So so I would visualize a very different kind of kind of transition towards socialism. The more prolonged through this business of a left agenda, but but the hallmark of it must be the protection of petty production because Neoliberal capitalism is destroying the <laughs> Three lakh peasants are coming in Sweden. And you have to therefore protect the peasantry against primitive accumulation of capital. Will it be a meat task? Ah, sorry? Will it be a meat task? Because. Hello. Meat task. Hello. What are you doing? What are you doing? Meat task. I am not going to do it. Yes. You know, globalization, India's turn to neoliberal economic policies was in 1991. India became independent in 1947. For 44 years, it was an economy that was growing. Employment growth was greater during those 44 years than now. In fact, the food grain absorption on the part of the people was greater during those 44 years than now. And as, as, a, as a result, it is again another of those propagandas of neoliberal capitalism that you cannot sustain yourself without. India, other than oil, is reasonably self-sufficient in every commodity. And that is the contribution of that earlier period. Of course, there will be transitional difficulty because the moment you do this, uh, you know, uh, there will be, let's say, uh, Americans will try to impose sanctions against you. So, so there will be transitional difficulty. But as long as you have sufficient political will and can actually explain things to the workers and peasants and re 
15, they are kind of ranking, uh, they should not be the last primitive accumulation is the, uh, the progression. So what happens during the uh, primitive accumulation when there is progress? Primitive accumulation is basically where capitalism destroys or restricts or squeezes the pre-capitalist sector. Okay. This squeeze can take the form of squeezing incomes there. The squeeze can take the form of taking over their assets. Okay. Now, all such primitive accumulation implies an impoverishment as far as the pre-capitalist petty producers are concerned. Since capitalism is imposing that impoverishment, they constitute an ally, potential ally of the working class. Therefore, if overthrowing capitalism, the working class can call upon this potential ally by providing, this is the point of the time, by providing an alternative agenda that says, we are going to protect you. Okay. Capitalism is destroying you, we are going to protect you. So, 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 so primit and if you're going to do that, in that case, you cannot say that their destruction is a progressive act. Because if so, then of course you may as well abandon all hopes of evolution. Okay.